Hello and welcome to Console Cowboys. So thank you to everybody who has been liking, subscribing, and commenting and sharing this all out on social media. I greatly appreciate it. If you aren't following me already, you can grab the link for Twitter in the description below. And as always, like, subscribe, and all of that good stuff. Now let's hop right into it. So in the last video, we created a template that we can reuse every one time we wanna to connect to the blockchain or pull data back from a smart contract. First, we connected to the blockchain and verified that we are connected with web3.isConnected. Once we did that, we templated it out so we can put in the data to talk to a smart contract. So now let's actually communicate with a smart contract and pull some data back. Now the simplest smart contract out there would be our ERC20 contract. And it's a standard contract for all of the tokens that you guys are out there buying, such as Link and Decentraland, et cetera, et cetera. All the tokens that come off the Ethereum standard are your ERC20 tokens, unless we're talking about non-fungible tokens, which are your ERC721 or ERC1155 or NFC as the kids like to call it. What we're gonna do is take a look at the ERC20 tokens. And the reason we're gonna do that is because there's standard functions that we can call and pull data back is a very good first contract to communicate with. So the ERC20 token standard, you can read through this on ethereum.org. The thing that we care about in here is what can we call and what can we bring back? So there are a bunch of methods here and we have things like name, symbol, decimals, total supply, balance of, and we can call these and get data right back from these ERC20 token contracts. So let's do that. Let's hop back into our editor here. And what we're gonna do is I created a another blank py file and i called it interact with erc20 now what we're going to do is exactly what we said in the last one we are going to take all of this so we don't have to write it out again because it's all going to be the same and we're going to paste that in here and then all we have to do is fill in what is our target address and what is our target abi so we can communicate with that smart contract as target so what do we want to communicate with? Well, we're going to communicate with an ERC20 token. So let's grab one. What we're going to grab is Chainlink. So if I go up here and I search for something like Chainlink, should bring back the Chainlink contract. I don't know what that did, so let's try up here. Ah, here we go. So here's the Chainlink contract, and here is the address, and we can click into this contract. So let's take this address and we'll put it within our address here. And remember, just as a reminder, we had this two checksum address. So if this was wrongly formatted, it would fix it for us. Just as a reminder to the last video as you learn these things. Now in here, we can get some more information. Now we obviously need that ABI so we can communicate with all of those methods and we can get those under contract. Now within contract, we have our source code. You know that if you were following the last you know, blockchain hacking series, this is where you grab your code, your ABIs. You can also uh, decode bytecode, et cetera, et cetera, in here. There's some other functionalities. So here's all of this information. We can do an export ABI or just hit copy to clipboard here. So let's grab that and we're gonna paste that into our target ABI here. So now we have that ABI and we also have our target address. So we can connect with target now and communicate with Chainlink. But before we do that, let's look around here a little bit more and just get a background and see what else is in here. Let's scroll up here and take a look at some other stuff. So we have our read contract and our read contract are just our methods that we saw here in the ERC20 standard, symbol and name, etc. So we can see those right here because these are just standard functions that you can call on an ERC20 token. We can also have a connection to the blockchain with this connect to dot Web3, which we can use something like MetaMask will pop up and connect to it there and perform actions. We have our write contract with transfer call, transfer, et cetera. We have events in here of events that are happening. And then we have things like transactions, internal transactions, token transfers, ERC20, which would be what we're looking at here in ERC20 token, the link token. We have our NFT transfers which would be our ERC721 or ERC1155 tokens, your NFT or non-fungible tokens. 
And so just familiarize yourself with all the things that are in contracts and just get a good idea of what's in here because understanding all of this stuff will be very beneficial as far as looking at these things from a security perspective. Now, if we cruise down here, speaking of security, we can also sometimes see things like contract security audit. So there's a security report in here. It was done in April 14th, 2019. And if you look through here, you can see, okay, what is wrong? What do we have in here? So we have two findings, two low severity issues, no invulnerable ERC-20 token, and a no zero address checking. So you can look through here, check out some of these links and get an idea of what was found on this contract. Could be beneficial for helping you look for things in ERC-20 tokens if that's a auditing job that gets presented to you. Understanding what other people found will help you in the future. So it's good to just go through here and understand all of this stuff. So let's hop back in the code here. So to review, we made a connection object to the blockchain. We use that with the target address and the target ABI to create a target or our connection to the contract. And we connected to this address here, which is the chain link contract. So we can use that target now and say target.functions. These functions are the methods that we saw in the ERC20 contract, such as dot name. Now that should pull back the name from the smart contract and give us the ERC20 token name. But we need to say dot call because there's dot call and dot transactions and the dot call will just pull back data. We're not making any you know, changes or anything like that. So we just do it with a dot call and we can say print. So we're gonna print this out with Python. So if we say Python and then we do our O2 interact with ERC20, we should get back the name of the smart contract. In this case, we did here, it is the chain link token. So that's perfect. So what else can we call? Well, we can call back any of those other methods. So let's grab the symbol. And this should be the link symbol, L-I-N-K. Perfect. And then now let's grab something where we have to do a little bit of modification here to get the right value. That way we learn a couple more things. So let's grab the total supply. So now if we print that out again, we're going to get a big long number. Oh, we gotta save it. And it's gonna have a whole bunch of zeros at the end, but I know that the link token has, I believe it's 1 billion, that is way larger than 1 billion. So what is going on here is that's adding those 18 zeros after based on the number of decimals. Now, how do we tell how many decimals are on this contract? Well, if you remember correctly, if we hop back here, there's actually a decimals function that we can call to get what we need. So let's call that, we'll say, And this will give us the math we need to get the correct value back. It should be 18, that's the standard overall. So yes, it is, it's 18. So with this 18, we can do a little math to get the 1 billion. And that's going to be, let's copy paste this. That way it's automated a little bit. We're not just hard coding things in. So we'll say divided by 10 to the power and that's gonna be 18, so that's gonna be our 18 zeros. And that should give us what we need back, which would be the 1 billion. And then I'll show you an easier way to do it so we don't have to do math. So let's print that out, and we get back the 1 billion. But now let's do this a little bit easier because I don't always wanna do math. I don't know about you. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna use a, another Web3 function that handles this for us. It's going to be the from way function. So if you remember, those 18 zeros is because we're dealing with way instead of ether, and way is the smallest denomination of ether, kind of like, you know, there's 100 cents in a dollar, right? So if we hop back over here, we can see, okay, if we put in one ether here, we get all these zeros and those are those 18 for, this is one way is equal to all of that. And then GUE is in the middle right there. So it's, uh, I believe, nine zeros at the end of that. There's also Finney and some other ones, but you get the point, right? One ether is equal to one with all of these zeros. So 
In order to convert it, we can use something called from way, and that's a web3 function. So we can say web3 dot from way, and we just wrap this function in that. And then we're gonna say, well, what do we wanna do it from way to? Well, we wanna do it to ether, right? So we're gonna call from way, which is going to take that big number that we had before, and we're gonna say, this is way, we would like ether, and we'd like to print that out just like we did up here. So we should get both of those printed out now. So let's do that. And yes, we do. So we get this uh, 1 billion and 1 billion. Only difference here is this has a dot zero, which is pretty inconsequential. So that's just an easier way to do that, to leverage the functionality within Web3, which is kind of what we're doing here is we are learning as much as we can about Web3 and how to utilize everything as we go through here because it's going to make us very powerful in all of our hacking endeavors. So that's going to be it for this video. And the next video, I believe we're going to hop into, let me see here, looks like wallet interactions. So some simple wallet interactions in the next video. So I will catch you there. And in the meantime, use all of this information here, connect to some other contracts, review what's in those contracts, call some different data, and just play around just so you get used to all this functionality. It's not very complicated, but understanding it is gonna make you very powerful when you're hacking around on things.